Okay guys, got another field test here for this NOCO boost pack that I'm using. It's the GB70. Uh, you see my battery voltage right now is 0.2 of a volt. And uh, this is on a Honda, I don't know, V6 Honda. What year is this Honda? I don't know, it's gray. <laughs> it's a gray Honda. Uh, V6 and uh, it's actually in here. What is it? 2001. 2001. It's actually in the school here at Rosedale Tech for a no start we have no idea what we're doing with it yet i just want to really test this booster out real quick and um so the owner's manual says that if the voltage is less than two volts that it will not enter the boost mode and that i'll need to do that manually uh so see how this reacts i'll get you a voltage reading back here in a second Okay, so point two, as you can see, I'm connected. Uh, if I turn this on, it should have an automatic detection. It did on the last one. You can see that this light is not lighting up. So there's some warnings with doing this. When I hit this, I'm going to apply voltage to these terminals. I have to make sure I'm connected right. I'm confident in that. You see I'm fully charged, so I hold this button in for three seconds. See my meter just update. It just went to 12 volts here. Was the key already on? Oh, from pushing it in. No big deal. See if it cranks. And again, this wait before you start that. Uh, this thing is a no. A no start from what we are told. So I don't expect it to start. But go ahead and crank it. Okay. Well, it almost started right there. My voltmeter like just. Let me change my range here. And make sure you guys are seeing that. Yeah, go ahead and crank it again. Okay, we might want to get a hose on this car. Um, yeah, do, leave it run for a second. I, I had another uh, question that one of you guys asked me about. Should we immediately take this off after the car has started? And uh, we're at 15 volts on the charging system right now. I don't know. Um, I don't remember seeing that warning in the owner's manual. So let's leave it connected and see if it blows up on us. All right, right the engine. <laughs> I, I don't think it will. I mean, it's a little bit higher voltage than what we're seeing out of this unit. But if anything, uh, it would be charging it. But I don't know the internal circuitry, so I don't want to promise you that. But I'm going to leave it connected just because. I, I want to see. Um, I know that was a concern for some of you. You want to leave the box connected to the car. And you want to drive the car into the shop. Can you do that? Well, you, as you can see, I'm leaving it connected. And I don't see any any issues. Shut that off again for me. And uh, let me turn this off for a second. See what kind of battery voltage we have right now. Nothing. Yeah, you see this battery is completely shot. So now I'm down to about one volt on the battery. There's 0.9. And again, if I turn this tool on with voltage less than two volts, it doesn't sense the polarity properly. And you can see it, there's really nothing being applied. That's the, some built-in safeties with the tool is that's what they're doing is internal polarity circuitry and tests. And then when it senses the proper connection, it'll turn on the, the boost automatically. And you can see it's not doing that. So that's why this override button is here. And... You see we have 12 volts. We go ahead and start that. Okay, cool. Shut that off. I want to address one more thing that was asked of me. Uh, let me turn this boost off. Power this down. And the question was, it was a good one because we see this a lot when we get cars in. What if the battery's missing? You know, can we use this tool as a battery? I don't know, let's try it things that we run into in the field. I, I really think, uh, again though, this tool is designed not for the, not really so much for the technician as it is for an emergency type situation. All right, battery is disconnected. We'll go negative, positive. Can I use this tool as the battery? Let's try it. Light is on. Of course, no sensing of polarity. The circuit's dead. Hit my boost. 
Uh, hang on, let's get a voltage reading here while we're doing this with no battery. There's 12 volts right there. No battery at all. Go ahead and start that. cool with that. I think we'll leave it run for a second here too and see if this 15 volts does any damage to it. Uh, the nice thing about this being given to me is if it blows up, so what? Right? This is supposed to be a no start. I don't know why the car is running. It's got a really high idle right now, which is different. Huh? Yeah, that's really hot. Okay, cool. You can kill it. Well, there you go. We can run a car with out a battery off of it. It actually started the car with voltage under 0.2 of a volt. Um, <laughs> one other thing that uh, I won't be showing on this one. We used it the other day on a Volvo that was dead and we had what about, what do you think, about seven times we cranked it. When we were doing no start diagnostics, we cranked the car maybe seven times for about, what do you think, how long? 10 seconds each maybe, not quite that long. Say seven times for seven seconds each and it, the, the charger was dead at that point. So one thing I will say about this unit is it doesn't have a large reserve capacity. You're not going to be cranking an engine over for a long period of time, maybe like one of the bigger boxes would have. But uh, yeah, definitely so far I've been impressed with it. Okay guys, we're gonna add another piece to this. I'm gonna use this car as a guinea pig for how long we can crank an engine with this boost pack. And I realize this is just a V6 Honda and it's not a big high compression engine in a big truck or something like that. So it is what it is, but I'll, uh, see, I guess I could get an amperage reading too if I use my inductive probe. Well, maybe we'll do that in the future. We'll see what kind of current we're dealing with too. Um, I have the battery disconnected, so you know that I'm not using the battery at all. And uh, I have my voltmeter connected here too, so you guys can see what I am doing. And uh, I guess we'll just use the timer on the video, you guys can watch how long we crank it. I'll do maybe 10 second cranks each and we'll give the starter a chance to cool off. And you know, we'll see how long this thing delivers. Right now, again, no voltage being delivered from the tool. Even when I turn it on, you see I'm at 100% charge. And it, it is a little bit low to be fair. I did a couple cranks previously and I didn't charge it up so I don't know how much that's going to affect it. I really didn't use that much of it, but uh, I'm gonna hit the boost. Okay, and just going to crank it. Okay, that was more like 15 seconds, but uh, we'll give that starter a chance to cool off. And I will not chop any of this, so you know I'm being straight with you guys. And let's, uh, let's do that again. I'm probably going to overheat this starter trying to uh, prove this this box. This is actually performing better than it did on, on the Volvo that I had just mentioned. I think it actually may help that the battery is removed in the case of a of a dead battery because not only are you are you using the current to run the starter you're also stealing some of that current is being used to charge the dead battery so there's a factor in there guys that we have to consider that I, I may actually be helping things with the terminals removed 
as far as how much crank time we get. All right, here goes again. that cool off for a second and talk to you guys uh, one of the things you might be thinking is well why don't you hook the terminals back up well I kind of screwed myself here and, and that is throughout the day today I had a battery charger on this so this battery is is relatively charged right now and um, I, I'm definitely thinking about this as this starter is cooling off that we we could have an issue with a, a battery that's completely dead and when you hook up the boost pack again you're using current from this to charge the battery at the same time you're trying to crank the engine. There's also situations, we've all run into it when, when we're jump starting a car, where you have a shorted battery and it will affect you being able to jump start a car even from another vehicle with good cable. So we've seen bad batteries do that. Uh, battery condition is a variable here for sure. Let's see what kind of level we have left here let's turn the boost off it's showing me 75 percent now turn that back on and uh yeah you guys can still see the voltage all right cranking it again didn't expect to get this many cranks out of it the the Volvo that I did I keep mentioning this Volvo that we worked on you guys will be able to see it um, it'll actually be on scanner Dan or premium it's probably a four or five part series where I'm, I'm doing a no start diagnosis on a 2006 Volvo s80 with an electronic fuel system and it's missing power to the fuel pump and and we cranked it a few times not really this long and it killed the the booster so um, well there's factors in charge level here too you see I'm down to 50% and my I apologize for taking so long here but I, I don't want to overheat this starter and I got to give it some rest time so I'm cranking it again That's not what this car is here for. Uh, it's here for an intermittent no start. I think it might have actually a bad ignition switch. Uh, right now I have the uh, PGM FI main relay unplugged just to keep it from running. And uh, I'm, I'm gonna crank it, I don't know, maybe two more times and then give up here. that horn there I was reaching in this time to crank it cranking it again sorry man I, I'll tell you what guys I'm just I'm not willing to crank this thing any further I am uh, concerned about overheating the starter. I just want to make sure that I'm giving you guys good information about the tool. You can make your own decisions on whether or not you think it's worth it. Uh, this is battery voltage. That's what I was just doing here. 
is measuring the battery itself. I really wanted to hook it back up to the battery, and it, which would take a little bit more current from it. Uh, okay, one more crank. Back to the tool. And we, we were showing, what, 25%? Let's turn that off. Yeah, 25%. We'll get, let's get one more crank out of it. Off of that auto range. Okay, here we go. It just started dying off there on that last crank. I'm not sure what the voltage levels were during cranking. I'll be able to tell in the editing part. You guys were able to see it and what it was doing. Um, but I'm actually very impressed with this tool and the amount of cranking that I got out of it. Again, I think results will vary based on the engine size and then also battery condition is going to be a big factor there. Um, I should probably redo this test one more time with this battery drained like it was. Well, we'll save that for another video. You guys will see this tool in what I'm doing. Uh, one of the other things that I liked about having this is you guys that follow me and watch my case studies when I'm out in the field, uh, you know, I'm always having dead batteries. So you're going to see this thing more and you'll hear me comment on it more. I think I'm done. Uh, doing reviews on just the tool. You, you will see it again if you guys follow along and, and I'll make comments and update you down the road. I think it's important to know six months from now, how's it doing? You know, is it still holding a charge? Is it still doing what I need it to do? Um, again, I, I don't expect this to really give me a long period of cranking on some of the bigger engines. Um, this again was a smaller V6, things to consider but I think it'll help you guys make a decent decision anyway about the tool itself. All right, thanks guys.